Hey, Ezra chapter 6. Trying to stop the work again and another letter is going off. Then Darius, the king of the king made a decree. And search was made in the house of the rolls. That's the only time that word shows up, rolls. Where they keep the rolls. And their papers before is not stacked of papers, but rolls rolled up. Where the treasures were laid up in Babylon. And it was found at Akamitha in the powers that's in the province of the Medes, a roll therein with a record thus written. All right, so they found one of the records, and here it is. In the first year of Cyrus the king, chapter 1, verse 1, the same Cyrus the king made a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be built, the place where they offered sacrifices. And let the foundations thereof be strong, strongly laid, and the height thereof three score cubits, and the breadth thereof three score cubits, with three rows of great stone, and a row of new timber. And let the expenses, well, that's the first time, the only other time that word shows up in verse 8, and we get down there, expenses, be given out of the king's house. So what has been found? A decree went out by Cyrus. He says, listen, go build that temple in Jerusalem for God. This is the size. This is what's the building material. And guess what? You're going to pay for it. Now, this is not what the people in chapter 5 were expecting. They were expecting, I'm going to assume, that the Jews were lying. And they would be called on their lies. That expenses be given out of the king's house. Out of Cyrus's house. And also let the golden and silver vessels of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took forth out of the temple, which is at Jerusalem, be brought unto Babylon, and it be restored. So everything that was that belonged to God in the temple that, that was taken, it's now in Babylon. Gather it up and bring it back. Don't keep nothing. <clears throat> and brought again to the temple, which is in Jerusalem. Everyone to his place, placed them in the house of God. So, if they were the dishes for the show table, that's exactly where it goes. It goes to the show table. If it was instruments used for the candlestick, then it belongs to the candlestick. Don't you mix match. So Cyrus is saying, I want the temple of God built. I want it exactly the way God wanted it. I want how the law prescribes is what he's saying. Without mentioning the law. And he's recognizing that God has an orderly fashion for everything. And Cyrus is making, don't make no mistakes. That's what he's saying. Alright, so that's what they found. That's the decree of Cyrus. Verses 3 to five. That's not what they wanted to find. Now therefore that Nene, the governor beyond the river, Shathed Bodai, and your companions, the upper satellites, which are beyond the rivers, be ye far from thence. Now verse six the decree of Dyrus is Right into the people that wrote him. Starting from, the people that wrote him said, you know, the Jews are doing this work. He's writing to him and says, you know what? Be far from them. What's he saying? Get away from them. You have no business being over there. That is order. That is a decree by the king. You have no business to be there. Remember earlier they tried to come in and say, well, we like to do the work with you. No, you're not going to do it. Well, you know, they're building the city. No, they're not. Get away from them. Let the work of this house of God alone. No more letters. No more stopping them. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God in his place. Only Jewish people, don't you guys interfere. Just get away from the Jews. Get away from them. Now, this is not Cyrus. This is Dyrus. 
And he's had it with the enemies of the Jews. Moreover, I make a decree. Verse 6 is a decree in order to those specific. But here's another decree, a new one. We read the decree of Cyrus. Now here's the decree of Dyrus. I make a decree what ye shall do, you enemy. To the elders of these Jews for the building of this house of God, that of the king's goods, even of the tribute, the taxes that they get, Dyrus's tribute, beyond the river, forthwith, that's the first time that word shows up, forthwith, and there's that other, only other time, expenses, be given unto these men. So what I collect from taxes of the neighboring areas, because tribute is a tax on the people in the land, you can stay there, but we're going to make you pay. Dyrus says, you take that money and give it to the Jews to build. Now, is that what the enemies of, of God's people wanted? Absolutely not. They wanted to shut the whole system down. And they're reading this letter. We're to give them more money? Yes. Be given unto these men that they be not hindered. That's the first time that word shows up. Don't stop. Don't halt. Don't hinder them. Don't press their time. Leave them alone. That's what he's saying. And that which they have need of, both young bullocks and rams and lambs, for burnt offerings of the God of heaven. Dyrus wouldn't be too good in America today because he's not the God of evolution. Dyrus, this heathen, says God made heaven and earth. Wheat, salt, wine, and oil, according to the appointment of the priests, which are at Jerusalem. Let it be given them day by day without fail. Give the priests their due for sacrifices and for their own needs, their own eating and drinking. He is now also, not only do you build that temple, but I allow you to do the sacrifices. I allowed the priest to do what they need to do, and I allowed the priest to make a living off that. This is the decree, verse 8. That they may offer, I mean, yeah, offer sacrifices of sweet savors unto the God, capital G of heaven, and pray for the life of the king and his son. That's kind of interesting because Dyrus has faith in God. He doesn't say pray to G-O-D-S's. He doesn't say go to the groves. He says that God, capital G, that made the heavens. And not only that he made the heavens, but he's in the heavens. People, please, pray for me when you're doing what you're doing. Now there's another decree in verse 11, but if we may go back a chapter or so, let's look at chapter 4, verse 21. And we'll see a little note that God made. Verse 4, chapter 4, 21. Give me now commandment to cause these men to cease. And that this city be not builded. Unto another commandment shall be given from me. What's another commandment? Build, build, leave them alone. You see that little side note in there? Unto another commandment. Here it is, chapter 6. The other commandment says build, build, leave them alone. There's nothing stopping these Jews, the Hebrews, from doing the work of God now. We're not done. Another decree, verse 11. I have made a decree, and that's a law, that whosoever shall alter this word. That's what God says about his words. If anybody changes this, this word, this decree, this law, what? You protect those Jews, you take care of those Jews, you let the Jews build, you let the Jews do what they need to do. If you alter this, let timber be pulled down from his house and be set up, let him be hanged therein. Now we're going to see a story like that in Esther with Haman. I mean, he doesn't tear his house down, but he builds gallows in the middle of his house or courtyard. And Dyrus says, listen, you're going to offend those Jews? I'm going to take your house, I'm going to build you gallows, I'm going to hang you on your property so all the people can see, 
Don't mess with those Jews. Now, when we look at what God told Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I will bless them that bless you. What do you think Dyrus is going to get? He's going to get a blessing. Let him hang therein. Let his house be made a dunghill for this. A sewer place. A place to put doo-doo. There's another word I'm thinking. See? I mean, that, that expression to be filled up, <coughs> see, comes out of the Bible. You know what happens when your house becomes a dunghill? It becomes stinky. It comes by. Your neighbors are not going to be too happy with your family. You know, they weren't too happy with Haman in the middle of the night building these gallows. When we get to that, I, I, I did that in Sunday school. Here is the middle of the night and they're hammering and sawing and all that. And the God, capital G, that has caused his name to dwell there, destroy all kings and people. That's prophecy of the second advent by Dyrus. Because when is God going to destroy all people at the second advent? Jesus Christ. There's prophecy. Christ did not destroy anybody's first advent. Matter of fact, they could not die around Jesus. Every time they came to Jesus, in some ways dead, up from the grave that person rose. And they went back to death. But you have a Gentile direst king making a decree of blessing those Jews, and he says the second advent, verse 12. Put 6 and 12 together, we get 666. Twelve foot six plus six is twelve. That shall put to that uh, that shall put to their land to alter and to destroy this house of God which is in Jerusalem. You protect the Jews and you repent re, uh, and you and you protect that temple. If not, may God destroy you. You know who destroyed the, the final temple? The the, G the Romans. Which is in Jerusalem. I, Dyrus, have made a decree. Let it be done with speed. Until I make another commandment. Then Tatnai, governor on this side of the river, Sheth, Buzanai, and their companions, according to the which Dyrus the king had sent, so they did speedily. <laughs> But they didn't want to. And the elders of the Jews built it. And they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai. The prophet and Zechariah the son of Ido. Again the prophet Haggai his book. And Zechariah's book. What's going on to those two prophets whose book? They're building the temple. Haggai he says listen why do you guys. Why have you stopped working? Get back to work. Chapter 5, 6, and 7 of Ezra. And they built it and finished it according to the commandment of God of Israel. I thought it was Cyrus. I thought it was Cyrus. It has nothing to do with him. God was using those two men. But God said the 70 years are up. Go back and build. I'll let the government help you. We have a great God that can control the governments. Satan offered Jesus, oh, if you fall down and worship me, I'll show you the moments of the government in time, a moment of time. Man, we've gone through three kings so far. We've gone through Cyrus, uh, Xerxes, Dyrus, and, and uh, yeah. And build and finish it according to the commandment of the Lord of the God of Israel, and according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes, kings of Persia. So God allowed these kings, these kings allowed God to do what needed to be done. Pharaoh did not. God didn't force nobody. Pharaoh of Exodus could have done the same thing as Cyrus and Darius, but his heart was hardened. 
And this house was finished on the third day of the month Adar, which was the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. That would be approximately our march. And the children of Israel, the priests and the Levites, and the rest of the children of the captivity kept the dedication of the house of God with joy. It's finished. Remember, they already had a big joy when the foundation was laid. Now they're going to joy. It's done. Foundations laid great. People are crying. People are happy because those that remember the temple, oh man, this is how wonderful it was, how terrible we were. And the people rejoice. And, hey, we got the foundation. Now it's all built. And offered at the dedication of this house of God 100 bullocks, 200 rams, 400 lambs, and for a sin offering. Look at them acknowledging their sin. For all Israel. Now they're announcing their sin. Now people say that Mary was not sin, had no sin, and yet she brought the sin offering prescribed in Leviticus 12. And the Old Testament, when you brought a sin offering to the altar, you were telling God and the priest that was taking it, hey, I'm a sinner. The nation has sinned. Twelve he goats, according to the numbers of the tribe of Israel. And they set the priests in their divisions, their offices, and the Levites in their courses for the service of God, which is at Jerusalem, as is written in the book of Moses. They obeyed the word, they obeyed the law. And the children, and this is the second time they've had the dedication of the, of the, of the temple. Second Chronicles 7 was when Solomon dedicated the temple. Their sin destroyed the temple. And the children of the captivity of the Jews kept the Passover upon the 14th day of the first month. About six months later. Adar. No longer than that. They kept the Passover upon the 14th day of the first month. Proper time. For the priests and the Levites were purified together. They prepared for that day. All of them were pure and killed the Passover for all the children of the captivity, the Jews, and for the brethren, the priests, and for themselves. And the children of Israel, which were come out of the captivity from Babylon, and all such as had separated themselves unto them from the filthiness of the heathen of the land. Uh, what's the filthiness of the heathen? They got rid of the Christmas tree, they got rid of the idols, they got rid of the images, everything that, that did not please God that why they were brought to Babylon, they got rid of it. They had no heathen practices. Jeremiah talks about one going out getting a tree in the woods and decorating it with gold and silver. The heathen in the land to seek the Lord God of Israel did eat. So they got rid of all the heathen practices and kept the feast of unleavened bread, which is, which is right after the Passover, seven days with joy. For the Lord had made them joyful and churned the heart of the king of Assyria unto them. Man, they're thanking God. Here's the temple. Lord God, thank you for the king for doing what he's done for us. And not just a king, three kings. That's where they get the three kings from. I don't know. And strengthened their hands in the work that they finished of the house of God, the God of Israel. So they've given God the credit. God has controlled the government for us to do it. The temple is finished. We have taken part of two feast days in our calendar that our father's talking about. And Lord God, not only that, you gave us the ability. You had us helped us to build that temple we just built. All glory gives to God. That's what they're doing. 